fucking Jenny Cream, man. God damn it, Jenny Cream. Why you gotta be fucking me like that, man? Treated like a son. You stabbed me in the fucking heart. <laughs> fucking Jenny, man. So, I wake up yesterday, you know, toiling around, get to work, fiddling the old, I don't know, it was the Facebooks or the Instagrams or whatever it is. And lo and behold, there's a story about Jenny Cream out. Okay. One of my favorite beers of all time. One of my favorite chuggers of all time. I'm interested immediately. And uh, so I click on it. And it says, Jenny Cream Ale getting a branding. A rebranding, I should say. Fair enough. I'm all... Listen. Times have changed. Styles have changed. I'm cool with it. You can rebrand all you want. Knock yourself out. Now you read the article. This can looks fine. It's a little scripty. It reminds me a little bit of... Um, like a little Cigar City-ish. Kind of, but whatever. It's Jenny Cream Ale, man. They're, you know, they're on Mount Rushmore. They're King Shit's Fuck Mountain. Or Cream Ale Mountain, at least. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. But then I get halfway through the article. And uh, it says that they're raising the price. That kind of pissed me off. But I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, it is what it is. Inflation. Beer's expensive. A lot of newer school fancy beers are really expensive. So, you know, a small bump in price isn't really going to affect me all that much. Next fucking line. Why are they doing a price increase? So they look more like a premium brand. So they move on a shelf a little bit closer to craft. That fucking shit pisses me off so much. Because it's like, I get it. I get it. I get the want to be... I get the want to be the bell of the ball, I get the want to be in the in crowd, you know, you're you're one of those kids, you know, you're in the AV club in high school, and you stink a little bit, and, and you kind of have to sit at a ch- table, and see the cool kids over there, and you go, I want to sit at the cool kids table, well, listen, motherfucker, you know, you're the one getting straight A's, you're the one who's fucking killing it, and fucking all your advanced placement tests, you're gonna fucking be at the cool kids table, you are at the cool kids table, you just don't even fucking know it yet, yet you strive to be at that short vision, short whatever you want to call it, like, uh, man, the word is escaping me, uh, it just your vision is so small that you think, okay, I want to be at the cool kids table, and that's where I'm going to find my market share, and it just doesn't make any fucking sense, to be perfectly honest with you, I just don't get it, you know, uh, Jenny Cream Ale, uh, Genesee as a whole, if you break down the brewery, they're not necessarily a gigantic brewery, they do get some distribution, um, they're bigger than most, I guess you would say, as far as, you know, some of the smaller craft breweries. But they're not even te- technically called a craft brewery because I believe a lot of their larger line uh, does have some corn and all that bullshit that the Brewers Association says you can't be a craft brewery. But as a whole, especially in a local regional uh, footprint, they're very, very a cra- much a craft market. They release, you know, everything from, you know, burn barrel aged beers to scotch ales to old ales, burn barrel aged old ales to, um, you know, hopped up hazy, juicy stuff. So they, they run the gamut of that. They're almost like if, if Sam Adams is on the edge of, I believe Sam Adams is a much bigger brewery. I didn't actually look up the data, but just knee jerk assumption. I'm assuming they're going to be a slightly or at least a decently bigger brewery, but. Just for the sake of argument, if you were going to take those two breweries and kind of associate themselves with each other, I would put, like, you know, it's a partly sunny, partly cloudy argument. I would put Sam Adams at that, okay, they are craft beer, big beer adjacent, where I would put Genesee at, 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 let me rephrase that again. Most people would put Genesee at big beer, craft beer adjacent. Um, Way more than, like, a Yingling Lager who is in the craft definition of a craft brewery but that's a whole nother argument so they have their role in craft beer i understand that but they also have their role in kind of macro beer jenny light and just you know those kind of beers are are chuggers those are 30 racks those are slayer beers those are the ones you bring to fucking you know barbecues and shit just to get have fun and have some kind of utilitarian beer jenny cream falls into that kind of realm but it's garnered a lot of kind of groundswell in a way that PBR had um, with the whole kind of Brooklyn hipster movement and that a lot of people would be like, okay, Jenny Cream, male fuck the world. You're looking at a car-carrying member 
of that, but I've always been that since I was like fucking 16 years old, so that's no different for me. But it's getting to that point where it's actually tapping into that kind of hipster, kind of I just want to chug Pilsner cream ale kind of market, and I just don't understand where their marketing angles come from, from trying to push it further towards craft, because the whole appeal of that market, the whole appeal of the PBR market is to be a kind of, you know, I don't even, I wouldn't call it macro beer, I wouldn't call it like, uh, you know, pseudo craft, it would be like almost like you have well drinks, you'll have like bottom well, upper well, maybe it's a bottom well thing as far as perception goes. But for them to try to push it more as like a craft market product doesn't make any sense. Now, I posted a thing on Instagram kind of making fun of it, basically kind of mimicking the intro that I had um, at the beginning of this video saying, you know, he stabbed me in the heart and all that stuff. And I had a person who is in the know with the whole uh, Genesee Brewery as a whole. Genesee Brewery is owned by North American Brewers, uh, which own, I believe it's Pyramid and uh, Magic Hat. Um... Let's see, they, Honey Brown Lager, which is weird because they just own Honey Brown Lager um, in Genesee. There might be more to it. But anyway, they're one of those mini conglomerates. Um, but they're also owned by Cerveza Costa Rica, I believe, which is actually, I believe, this is a subsidiary. This is all off the top of my brain because I can't do research while I'm driving. Um, is uh, It's like the Florida Ice and Ice Cream and Beverage Company or something like that. And this person is kind of like on, on the inside of those kind of worlds. He was telling me they've pretty much been firing um, a good portion of their upper level management at Genesee and at um, the North American Brewers Association. He said to the point where pretty much Florida um, Florida ice cream and beverage, I'm probably butchering that, but they're kind of running the ship, if you will, right now. And it kind of makes sense. Now it kind of comes into perspective. Now it's like, okay, why the hell are they doing this? Why are they ruining any goodwill? I mean, listen, it's, it's a $1 or $2 bump on a rebrand. Maybe I'm being a little bit fucking overzealous. Maybe I'm being a little bit too knee-jerk. Maybe I'm being a little bit too me. But it's not that big of a, of a change. But it, it almost smells like the beginning of, not I wouldn't say the end, but of a global shift for Genesee. I love Genesee. I have a warm place in my heart for them. So even in their beer reviews, I try to be as objective as possible. But I, I honestly... I'll tell you right off the bat, I feel like I go into most Jenny beers with a kind of uh, a, a little bit of a twinge inside going, oh man, I can't wait to try this, as opposed to being a little bit more impartial. That's just me. I'm a human being. What are you going to do? But with this, it's kind of, it's the it's it's not the straw that broke the camel's back. It's the person making the straw, or the person sowing the seed to grow the straw that break the camel's back, if you will. And that, I can just see this kind of turning in such a bad way, especially because when I talk, touched on Miller and uh, uh, Miller versus, I didn't touch on Miller, but Pat's Blue Ribbon versus, Mi or, man, words are hard sometimes. We'll get there. When I touched on PBR, I talked about how they had their market share of that kind of, like, low-grade hipster level, kind of low-grade upper-grade up, upper kind of niche market. Well, not too long ago, pretty much all of last year, there was a lawsuit filed by Paps against Coors because Coors basically makes all PBR a contract for him, so it's not necessarily like Coors owns Paps, but Paps basically had a contract that ran in 2020 um, having the ability to produce PBR. Well, during that contract reign, uh, PBR got a significant market bump, got to the point where they made a ton more beer, and Coors kind of had them by the old fucking cajones, you know what I mean? They were like, okay, um, we're not going to renew our contract in 2020, you got to go find another brewery that can make your beer. Well, you know, listen, for the level of beer that Paps was making, there's nobody could foot the bill. There's nobody that could, could even come close to footing the, the bill, the amount of beer that they needed to produce. So they were kind of like, okay, you're fucked. And, um, you know, Paps filed a lawsuit. Um, of course, some, some subsequently closed some breweries saying, okay, we, we don't have the production. You know, just shut, shut it the doors in an attempt to, like, kind of, cook the books and be like, we don't even have the amount of production space available to make their beer. It went to court in November, a couple months ago, and like, literally, while the jurors were debating on what to do, they came to like, not even an 11th hour deal, like an 11th hour, 59 minute, 59 second deal, kind of securing um, that production space for PBR. 
it's been what that happened in November. So you got November, December, January. We're in February now. None of the information has come out on that contract about what amount of production they're allowed to have, of whether you know Coors has some kind of monetary stake as far as production when it comes to PBR, a bunch of different things. There's no basically none of the details on the contract came out, so we don't know the future of PBR. Even though that contract was signed, we don't know how long it's for. We don't know the ins and outs and the details. And for me, the spiritual, spiritual successor, the, per, the beer for me that has been what everybody's PBR has been, has been Jenny Cream Ale. And with that future being as hazy, <laughs> pun intended, um, not really because there's no hazy beers involved in this conversation, but whatever. Um, with that future being so hazy, it's kind of, you would think... Jenny Cream Ale, and this goes to that short-sighted view I was talking about before, they would see this, and they would see this market with the ability to kind of open up. Because two things are going to happen. Either production is going to slow down on PBR, and then a void is going to be going to be filled. Jenny Cream Ale could fill that void. They can. They can for me. I love the beer, so they can fill all the voids they want. Um, but at the same time, there's also the... I'm passing the cop right now, so i got to kind of like keep my cool case you know i don't know if this whole videotape while you're driving thing is okay um but uh <laughs> anyway um they can fill that void or pbr gets bought like they're not going to go away so either or pbr gets bought by miller which would be almost the most logical kind of evolution of the deal and at that point you might lose that market share you know a lot of the pbr driven market share is from the flannel wear and avid brothers fucking super hipster along with you know at least a good portion of it because the craft beer drinker and that group as a whole isn't even like a, a gigantic chunk of beer drinking in general but that's where a lot of their groundswell a lot of their present day success comes from if they were to lose that there would have to be a void to be filled again, and they would look for something, and Jenny Cream Ale kind of fills that role. I actually didn't know how wide um, Jenny distributed until uh, uh, one of the gentlemen over at Four Brewers commented on uh, one of my Jenny uh, beer reviews, my thousandth review, which I did Jenny Cream Ale, saying that, oh, we love it, we get it out here. So I didn't even know they got it all the way out in Florida. But anyway, so it's weird for me for a business, and that's where the whole kind of being Florida beverage and ice ice cream company comes into play. It sounds like a, a, a marketing thing, a decision that was made in a boardroom, a decision that was made at a kind of on an Excel sheet, not in a brewer format, but in a kind of boardroom as opposed to just general vision down the road to see what would happen. And honestly, you know, cuts near and dear to my heart, man. Jenny Cream for life. So, yeah. I'd be a little bit weird going into some Jenny brews from now on, um, only because I, I know I didn't know about the, the, the dissolving of the uppity ups at Jenny, um, who I think were producing or, or had the company on a really fun track. Um, I've said it before and I said it again. If you ever find your way up Rochester Way, you want to have a fun time, check out Jenny Brewery. It's fantastic. They got crazy fun beers going on. The brewery itself is killer. You don't see that a lot from a macro perceived brewery. Um, so they had the brewery on the right track as far as the craft market goes. But it just seems like it seems like that kind of just changed. And, and me, you know, it's not something that just changed just like that. It's probably taken a bit for this for this uh, this all to come to a head. But just that one instance of, of reading that article about Jenny Cream Ale, uh, the rebranding having not an issue with the, even the price increase, but knowing that they're trying to shift the perception of the beer to something a bit more premium, just reeks of uh, some smarmy white collar dude making decisions over a fucking profit forecast as opposed to, and I'm not talking about it. <laughs> Let me put the brakes on there and say, I understand beer's a business. Uh, I'm, I'm quite the romantic when it comes to beer and how it's perceived and how we consume it both physically and through media and stuff like that. So I'm a romantic, but I'm not dumb enough to not realize it's a business and there's profits to be made and there's, you know, you want to finish in a black, you don't want to finish in a red, and there's all that talk needs to be had. But there's also a happy medium on both ends of the spectrum, and it just feels like they were pushing 
for profits while retaining a a a, a spirited brewer um, mindset and just this little tidbit combined with a couple other pieces of information just makes me think that's shifted from okay let's 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 uh, tighten up these profit margins and and see how much money we can make from these core brands which have garnered some goodwill from from people not just in the in the uh, Rochester Northwest New York kind of area but starting around the around the country kind of a bummer but yeah what are you gonna do I'll still j- drink Jenny cream ale for a bit keep my uh, finger on the pulse of what's going on but that so bummed me out yesterday so bummed me out uh, couldn't 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 uh, couldn't put a couldn't put a brighter damper on a on a delicious beer day yeah there you go so let me know what you guys think I know it's a little bit of a regional thing like I said I, I know Genesee gets uh, some of the core brand stuff out and about but this is probably going to be a northeast market thing let me go see, know what you guys think. It, you know, read up on it. Um, you go check out my Instagram story. I have the kind of uh, the uh, kind of a post about the article there. But if you just type in Genesee Cream Ale price increase or or rebrand or whatever, I'm sure it'll pop up on the internet. This is the point where I should put shit right here or links down below, but I'm just not going to do that. Um, and uh, there you go. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed this little commute. Massive beers commutes. Hopefully, you guys enjoy uh, enjoying a little crusher today. Maybe a little. Maybe a little pre um, pre price increase Jenny Cream Ale, and uh, hope we'll see you next time. Cheers.